Everything to know about gas lines in plumbing. Plumbers are responsible for swag. Swag. Sewer, water, and gas. So whether you're a homeowner or a professional plumber, understanding how to work safely with gas lines is critical. Because when it comes to natural gas or propane, safety is not an option. It is essential. First off, let's discuss some common mistakes that I see and unfortunately some people make. One of the biggest errors is using incompatible materials or improper fittings. I still see people that will use copper or things like that on gas lines. You don't do that anymore. For example, using non-approved connectors or making sloppy connections can cause leaks or even lead to explosions. Another mistake is not testing the system properly after installing or after making a repair on it. A leak test with soapy water is a simple but effective way. If bubbles form, guess what? You've got a leak. And one of the coolest leaks that I ever found on a house, I had tested this whole house, and as I got outside, I realized the smell was coming kind of through the wall. I went outside, and I'm looking around, and I soap everything down up top. I noticed as the soapy water runs down, the bubbles were coming from underground. It was a very simple repair. We had to dig it up and replace the gas riser. But the bubbles led us right to the leak. And it was very easy to show the homeowner, look, you've got a leak down here. Literally, imagine pouring a bunch of soapy water around a riser and it looks like it's boiling. That's kind of what it was. And guys, remember, ignoring the testing step can be deadly. And I know we get in a hurry and I know it's like, look, it's no big deal. I, I never have leaks. That one time that you do and you don't test it, you're going to be in trouble. Now, safety always comes first. So remember these key tips. Always use approved materials and fittings that meet local codes and standards. And before turning on the gas, make sure all connections are tight and secure. Now, gas is a very low pressure system. Here where I'm located, the gas system is actually two ounces of pressure. So when we test it to 15 PSI, that's really not a big deal. But some people, they're still afraid of it. Guys, here's the deal. If I can install water lines and make them not leak, I can do the same with gas. But remember, too, when you're doing that soap and water test, never use a flame. I've had some old plumbers say, no, we just run a flame along it. If it lights up, we know where the leak is. I'm not that crazy. Now, remember, too, on your gas system that you ensure proper ventilation during the installation and the testing. That way, if there is a gas leak, it doesn't bother anybody. Nothing ever happens. But if you smell gas, too... Stop what you're doing and evacuate. Open up the building, air it out, get as much fresh air in there as you can. Then if you need to, go out and shut the gas off. Before you ever start working on your gas system, you need to know how to turn it off. And if you can't do it or you're not sure where it is, call the gas company or emergency services. Now, in most places, most municipalities, that is the gas company. But remember, never to attempt to repair a gas leak yourself unless you're comfortable, unless you're trained, unless you know what you're doing. And to be honest, I would prefer you be a trained professional. Gas work is dangerous. Sometimes it's best to leave it to the licensed plumbers or the people that work on gas in your area. So let's talk about understanding the materials and their proper uses. There are a few options. Black iron pipe, that is the most reliable. That's what we've used for the longest. It's classic, it's reliable, but it's also heavy and it requires threading. Now, I say threading, once you get into bigger gas lines, it's even welding. So gas is something that, look, we take very, very serious. Now, there are some newer products too, the CSST, the corrugated stainless steel tubing. Now, it's flexible, very easy to install, but you've got to make sure it's properly grounded and installed according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Not just the manufacturer's recommendations, though, you've also got to make sure it meets local code. Now, most of the CSST manufacturers require that you have a certification stating that you know how to put their product together, and it's a big deal that you get that done. Now, there's flexible connectors that are useful for appliances, but they shouldn't be overused or installed in a way that traps moisture or debris. Whether you're a homeowner or a plumber, pull a permit, get it inspected. That way you've got another set of eyes looking at it, and this will help keep everyone safe.
Incorrect gas sizing is another critical point. Improper sizing can lead to problems. Undersized pipes can cause insufficient flow, while oversized pipes can be unsafe or just completely inefficient. That's why it's essential to follow the manufacturer's recommendations and the local codes and addendums for pipe sizing. And don't forget pressure regulators. They keep the gas pressure at a safe, constant level. Properly functioning regulators protect your appliances and your home. And if you're upsizing a system or you're increasing the pressure to a system, you may have to go through and formulate and get new regulators all the way through the house. If that's what's required, do it. Sometimes you can increase the pressure to help build up so that if you do install a tankless water heater, it can handle it. And then you put regulators everywhere else. Now let's talk about code compliance and regulations for gas line installation. Because if you suspect a problem with your gas line, safety is the top priority and remember that always. So always follow these simple steps. First, recognize the warning signs. Do you smell gas? Do you smell rotten eggs? Do you smell anything crazy like that? Because smell is the most common way people find out that they have a leak. Now, if there's a hissing sound, maybe you hear air moving in ways that you hadn't heard before. It's normally a high-pitched hissing near a pipe or appliance, and it can mean that you have a gas leak. Now, remember the line that I told you about in the getting where I got the soapy bubbles around it? There was dead grass right around it. So dead vegetation is something that can, I mean, think about it. It's trying to get oxygen. It lives on oxygen. But if plants or grass die suddenly around your gas line, it might be leaking underground. Also, uneven or inconsistent appliance performance. If your stove or furnace or water heater isn't functioning correctly, it could be a sign of either low pressure, could be a sign of a leak, or it could be a sign of moisture in your gas line. So these are all different things that you may want to look at. Now, also, sometimes there's visible damage. If you if you mow and weed eat around your gas line all the time and you start knowing, hey, down at the bottom, it's really rusty, the pipe looks like it's getting narrow, things like that, cracks, rust, or corrosion on pipes, fittings, or valves, anything like that, these are major red flags. So if you see it, contact a plumber and ask them or send them pictures and say, hey, I've got a question. What do you think about this? Now, what should you do if you notice these signs? Immediately shut off the gas supply at the main valve or the appliance shut off, depending on where the problem is. Now, I say immediately shut it off. Guys, that's if you know it's leaking. Shut it off. Call a plumber and tell them, look, I've turned off the gas here, but I've got a leak. Can you come out and look at it? If a plumber's the one who takes care of the gas lines in your situation, you may have to contact the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, and ask them, hey, how do we proceed from here? If you do smell gas or you think there's a gas leak, evacuate the area. Don't use any electrical switches, appliances, open flames, because sparks, well, they can ignite gas, but you already know that. If you think you smell it, don't go through and flip the switches. That one little spark may be enough to just light up everything. Now, there's a lot of common misconceptions about gas line, so let's clear up some of these today. First of all, flexible connectors are unsafe. That's not true. When installed properly, and they're the right ones, and they're maintained, flexible connectors are safe and convenient especially for hooking up appliances. It's like a big flexible union. It's great. Now, the key, of course, is proper installation and regular inspection. You want to make sure that on each end of it, you're not putting on Teflon. You're not putting on pipe dope, stuff like that. Another myth, DIY gas line work is fine if I follow online videos. The truth is, gas work can be very complex and it can be very dangerous. It requires training, experience, and adherence to the local codes. Always hire licensed professionals for anything beyond basic maintenance. Another myth is that gas leaks are easy to detect without testing. The truth is, the smell of gas is often the only warning you'll get. Always verify leaks with soapy water. Never rely solely on smell. And if you're still not sure, make sure you call a licensed professional. Another myth is that older pipes are safe if they look okay. To be honest, age, corrosion, and damage can compromise old pipes. Regular inspections help, but replacement is the best way to ensure safety. 
I've literally crawled under houses that, man, the gas line looked good. It was hanging from the rafters or hanging from the floor joists. It looked really good. But when I got in there and pressurized it, it was leaking. So you never know. If you notice persistent gas smells throughout your house or maybe even just certain areas, despite the repairs or if a leak test shows ongoing issues, replace the affected sections immediately. You shouldn't repair pipe. You should replace it. And remember, never delay replacing unsafe or compromised gas lines. It's a crucial step in maintaining a safe home or a job site. Huge thanks to our channel members. Your support helps us teach and grow the trades and keep this community strong. From the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every one of you for being channel members and helping make all of this happen. And guys, if you like this video, I really think you're gonna like this one.